Hello again, and welcome back to A Boeing Revolution, your number one news source for all information regarding the Boeing company. So, I've been busy. I've got uh, a new uh, topic today. Um, so, I thought we could talk about the Boeing company glass pods and skates and see uh, how this is going to get uh, put together. So, Powertrains, pods, passengers, and progress is the theme for today's uh, talk. So, what do we know so far? Not too much, but based on the actual sketches and pictures that we've seen, we can um, uh, gain a lot of information or uh, gather a lot of information from those sources and from what uh, we've, uh, we've heard Elon Musk uh, say. So... The glass pods look like this. Uh, they'll be moving passengers, cyclists, and potentially cargo, although that has not been spoken about yet. So, possibly they could work with a third party to move um, uh, packages, uh, food around, maybe utilizing the system. However, that's not been mentioned again, so that's more of a, a guess. So, also, in addition to the glass pods, we have uh, these skates. The skates move around cars. Presumably, they will be just electric cars, although, again, we've not been told they will uh, not move um, ice cars. But they could do. You never know. So, car skates move cars on demand and cargo. Uh, that'll be something we'll talk about later on in this episode. If they can move 16 passengers or they can move a whole car that weighs, you know, 2.5, 2.8 tons, why not move a cargo as well? So, what we know so far comes from uh, these um, design um, sketches and pictures and the actual videos that we received from the Boeing Company website. Um, we know very little really about um, how they intend to build it and the specs so they are absolutely critical to the success of this system they will be part of this system for decades and decades and therefore they need to be um, near on perfect to achieve uh, the goal of basically overtaking uh, the automobile in cities and towns and becoming the number one um, way to get around and it can be done it, it that will be the best way to move people and uh, packages around town a purpose-built system just for that powered via electricity without the need um, for surface level roads that get clogged up so what are the key aspects we need of this Boeing company system and this is based on a bit of common sense so it must be reliable we can't have um, pods and skates breaking down you know for the vast majority of their lifetime they need to be very 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 reliable they need to be efficient the energy we put in needs to be used efficiently to move people around it needs to be a comfortable ride. It needs to be of equivalent comfort to the Model S and the Model X. Autonomous. Obviously, it's not going to have a driver, so it's going to be driven uh, through uh, software and algorithms. So we need that to be uh, working 100% of the time. Even 99.999% of the time is not sufficient. So it needs to be smooth and rapid acceleration. Now, they, they sound a bit contradictory, but um, it needs to accelerate smoothly um, to around 40, 50 miles per hour. And then it needs to continue that acceleration all the way up to 155 miles per hour at a reasonable speed. Average performance in the above criteria equals failure or mediocrity. If that happens, this system will be a complete failure. 
if it's better to get a train or to get a taxi, people are not really going to be that interested. What we need is something that um, is perfect in all five of those areas. Near perfect. So, the facts. We lack information regarding the specifications of this vehicle. We literally don't know very much. We're just going off um, what Elon Musk said in the TED Talk, his recent uh, presentation um, about the Boeing company. Um, that was a couple of months ago. That is the information we have. We don't really have solid facts on this. So... What we do know is that both the glass pods and the caskets are built on the same platform, a modified Tesla Model X chassis. That's what we found out so far. Although it will be heavily modified because it's a lot bigger. Uh, the actual skate is a lot bigger than a Model X. So the top speed, we've heard him mention, originally it started off 125, then it was 150, and then at the most recent... Um, press conference with the mayor of Chicago he mentioned 155 miles per hour I think that is the final figure um, it's going to have a capacity of 16 people and that's comfortably 16 people it will have onboard wi-fi obviously underground um, you won't have connection to uh, cell cellular data so you'll need some kind of wi-fi system maybe a paid wi-fi system maybe that is a revenue source for the Boeing company uh, it needs to be autonomous, so Tesla Autopilot uh, follows 3D tunnel maps. It won't be anywhere as complicated as Autopilot, and it doesn't need to be, because it's following um, a set route. There's only so many routes it can take on the system. So, my predictions is mostly guesswork and common sense. Um, a lot of it could be correct. Some of it could be wrong. We won't find out for a good 12 to 18 months. Right, the powertrain. So, this will be a Tesla powertrain. We know that for sure. Um, will it utilize existing Model 3 motors? Probably, maybe slightly modified, we'll have to see. Um, it will be four wheel drive. To achieve good levels of acceleration and efficiency, we'll need four-wheel level, four -wheel drive. It'll either be three to four electric motors, maybe two at the front, one at the rear, or two at the front and two at the rear. Different gear ratios for the front and rear axle. So, what I believe is um, the front wheel um, will be there to get the acceleration from zero to 60 miles per hour. That will be a different gear ratio to the rear wheels, which will be there to get, get it up to a, a top speed of 155 miles per hour. Uh, that's how they've done it in the most recent Tesla Roadster. So I think they will uh, take what they've learned from the Roadster and implement it into the pods and the skates. Uh, so 0 to 60 miles per hour will be under 7 seconds. That's what I believe, which is comfortable. We don't want something ridiculous. You know, we've got passengers flying around inside the pod, you know, hitting the heads on the on the on the ceiling. We don't want that. We want something nice and smooth, some something reasonably rapid. But we want that top speed reasonably quickly. Twenty four seconds, I think, is reasonable, considering most journeys most journeys from point A to point B will be less than ten minutes, I imagine. So, the power sources. I believe it will be a dual source. That might be a bit controversial, but I believe so. So, lithium iron battery pack. Mm, it's difficult to say, it is a total guess. Um, the Tesla Roadster is 200 kilowatt hours. Will it be slightly less? Will it be slightly more? It'll be in, around that. Obviously, because it's driving at a very high speed all the time, it's going to burn through that electricity very, very quickly. So it might be close to 250. Um, just on the battery, it's difficult to say because of the top speed and the acceleration. 250 to 400 miles, I'd say. Again, total guess. I'm, I'm unsure on this. Because we've not heard Elon Musk speak about the range or the battery pack. So... 
I believe they will utilize a third rail based on the um, design pictures that I've seen. So the electricity will be fed into the pods via a third rail. A bit like this. Now, interestingly, there is a system, a uh, public transport system in Japan, the uh, Sapporo um, uh, tube system. Um, and that is fed via a third rail and it also utilizes um, rubber tires. But it's a, a much slower system. I believe the top speed is around 50 to 60 miles per hour. Um, however, we can, uh, from a glance of that system, have a look at the voltages that they use. So the Sapporo Municipal Subway, 750 volts. Uh, to lose just, we're just having a look at some other systems in terms of the voltages that they use. Um, because I believe the rear wheels in the pods and the skates will be driven uh, via batteries, but the front wheels will be driven via the batteries and the third rail. So it acts as a bit of a backup in case there's um, a power a uh, out outage, but also you've got that real high power to drive the pods up to um, the top speed of 155 miles per hour. So Toulouse is 750, uh, the Bay Area or BART is 1000 volts, Hiroshima Transit Line 750, Thameslink in uh, the UK, so in London is 750. So it's around about the same. Why are they utilizing around about the same? Why not more power? Because you often hear about overhead power lines in excess of 12,000, 14,000 volts. Well, because the third rail systems present electric shock hazards, hazards close to the ground, high voltages above 15,000 volts are not considered safe. A very high current must therefore be used to transfer adequate power, resulting in high resistive velocities, which is not ideal. Really, you'd want you know a very high voltage because you're losing uh, less power as the electricity passes through the system. So if you've got uh, a third rail that's you know 20 miles long and you put um, 750 volts in, um, a high current, as you go miles and miles away from the source, it loses that power. So what is a solution to that? Number one, number one of two is more voltage. Not only does that lead to less resistive losses it also means that you can use more powerful electric motors which equals greater speed so based on the prediction i'm unsure about this however i'm willing to say it will be somewhere between 2000 and 4000 volts it doesn't need to be any more than that because it's quite um a lightweight system the skates are very lightweight they, they, they're not going to be above five tons there'll be somewhere between three and five tons so you don't need huge voltages i think somewhere between two and four thousand is about right um also um i know in france they use this system called the ground level power supply also known as surface current collection is a modern method of third rail electrical pickup for street trams or trains so you break the third rail up into various sections. So say you've got a mile of a uh, third rail, you break that up into 100 pieces, and then you can charge that system in various places as and when you need it. So you could have um, 99 bits of that system turned off and just the one bit turned on. And as the tram passes over the third rail, it turns itself on and it powers the tram. And then as it leaves that section, it turns itself off, which would be perfect um, for the Boeing company if they could implement a similar system to that. So, the drag coefficiency. Now, Elon Musk likes to talk about drag coefficiency because it's an advantage that his uh, electric vehicles have over ice vehicles. They are much more efficient at going through the earth. So, if Elon wants to reach 155 miles per hour, it will take a lot of horsepower to overcome the air drag at that speed because obviously you're cutting through the air uh, the, the, the faster you go the denser the air in front of you so a tesla model s has an uh, a drag coefficient of 0 0.24 now my prediction is that the boring skate will 
get that down quite a bit, so it'll be around 0 0.2, 0 0.22, which will be excellent in achieving good levels of efficiency for the workings of this system. So it'll cost less to run because it is more efficient at cutting through the air. So, obviously it'll have no wing mirrors because no one's driving it. Um, it'll have a very flat underbody like the Tesla Model S. Um, it'll have low suspension. Um, the bumper of this system and the side skirts will be very, very low to the ground. They'll try and get them as low as possible. Um, the, the road that runs inside the tunnels will be ex extremely flat. Extremely flat. So they can really go quite low down with the suspension and um, lowering the, the, the front body of the actual vehicle. Um, the wheels are integrated into the body of the car. Um, so something quite interesting is if you use a flat um, hubcap on your car, it improves the range of that car uh, quite quite reasonably. So on this, as you see, the, the wheels are enclosed, um, therefore improving the drag uh, coefficient of the vehicle. Um, and there's another one. Uh, Mercedes, uh, three years ago, looked at this, the concept IAA, Intelligent Aerodynamic Automobile, in that you can adjust the shape of a car to improve its um, drag coefficient as it reaches high speeds. So it'll be some kind of mechanical system that either lowers the car or um, increases the, um, the rear sort of uh, spoiler of the car, the length of that to improve the drag coefficient. Potentially worth looking at. Um, the chassis and the frame. So it will be an alumi aluminium frame. That's what we like to say in the UK. Aluminium, as lightweight as possible. I know you guys call it something else, <laughs> but I can't say it. We say aluminium here. So a Tesla Model X chassis. Um, these are the current sizes. Um, it will be bigger than this in every area so that they can sit um, vehicles on top of it that are obviously around the same size as the Model, uh, say Model 3. So the car skate. The car skate is capable of carrying a Model 3, but not a Model S or X. Why have they done that? Because they want to make the tunnels uh, as small as possible, and it makes more sense if they are moving uh, slightly smaller vehicles. Um, the Model X and the Model S are, are big cars. There's lots of other vehicles they can move around on the system. So there will tend to be... Uh, in fact, I think there will solely be other electric cars, um, like the Volkswagen e-Golf, uh, Renault Zoe, those kind of vehicles, uh, maybe even the original Tesla Roadster, um, and also the new Tesla Roadster as well. I imagine that would be uh, small enough to fit on this system. Um, how will you sit a car on the skate once you've once you drive the car onto the skate? Um, you could have some kind of really complicated system that locks in the in the wheels. I don't think we need that. I think simply just having a slot, two slots, where you, you put, drive the, the, the wheels into, and then it, it sort of like, it locks it in there. It acts as a bit of a, um, uh, like a, a block um, to sort of prevent the vehicle uh, rolling backwards uh, when you're driving at high speeds. That, that, that'll be simply adequate for this system. So, obviously the glass pod contains a lot of glass. Um, a lot of glass. So, based on what we've seen uh, with the uh, Tesla Semi, semi uh, the, uh, they use something called armor glass, which is a, a type of laminated glass panels um, so essentially what they do is they stack uh, glass in layers between either PVB or EVA um, and then that's uh, glued together to provide a, a, basically a material that is uh, much more solid and very, very difficult to break. But also um, it's actually got really great sound insulation, uh, which is perfect because if you imagine this vehicle is... Uh, 
Herculing uh, along uh, the uh, the tunnels at very high speeds, um, the the electric motors. If you've got four of them, they'll be really sort of um, going at a very high rate. So um, to keep um, you also have um, air noise as well to keep the actual uh, noise inside the cabin quite low. Um, using this kind of laminated glass is, is a good, it's a really great idea actually. Um, prevents any kinds of accidents as well. Uh, makes the vehicle a lot, a lot, a lot more solid. Um, so a typical laminate makeup would be 2.5 mil glass, a 0 0.4 mil interlayer and glass, and then that's interlayered with uh, a cured resin. So it sort of glues it together. That makes it quite solid. Um, and yeah, that's that's what I believe they'll they'll use. They'll, they'll take that technology from Tesla um, and utilize it here in the actual glass pods. So this is quite critical. I've had a long, long time to think about this. I've been thinking about this quite, quite a long time over the last two two days while putting this together. The tires are really critical to this system. A lot of people are saying that um, the Boeing Company pods and skates will burn through tires quite quickly because obviously they're using quite a high speed, um, and electric vehicles in general have a lot of torque. And that burns through tires. Now, I wonder if you'll be able to use some kind of algorithm to um, control the acceleration of the vehicle to reduce um, tire wear. However, I think this is an opportunity for vertical integration in uh, Tesla and the Boeing company. So they could manufacture their own tires and um, specified uh, specifically for this um, vehicle and potentially for other Tesla vehicles like the Model 3, um, the Roadster, uh, and the Tesla semi truck, um, uh, the Tesla uh, pickup truck. So I think that this is a good opportunity for Tesla to integrate vertically. So what do we want of tires for this vehicle? We want a low rolling resistance designed to reduce the energy loss as a tire rolls decreasing the required rolling effort, which will obviously increase efficiency greatly for this system. You need to select tire materials and compounds that can resist the temperature and traction requirements associated with very high speed operations. This is absolutely critical to this system. We need to uh, invent a tire that can easily do 15 to 20,000 miles uh, without having to be replaced um, otherwise we'll be replacing tires too quickly and therefore we need to invest uh, in tire materials and compounds that could be used on this particular um, application so you could also fill the tires with nitrogen um, which is used you know in, in the racing industry uh, tire pressures will remain more stable over long term less pressure swings um, the key is in the key to this this system or this this Tesla built purpose built tire would be in the coefficient of friction between the tire and the road surface. So having um, a slippery uh, road surface in certain parts of the tunnels would also help um, with the coefficient of friction. That would lead to less tire wear over time. Hydroplaning very very unlikely. So. Tire, a lot of tires are built for very sort of general use. So this tire can be used safely in the snow. It can be used safely, uh, you know, in hot weather. It can be used safely uh, in heavy rain. It can be used safely if there's a light dusting of rain on the road. Um, so hydroplaning is very, very unlikely because this is a, a closed system. Um, so you can design the tires without having to think about hydroplaning at all because it'll be dry inside the tunnels. The tire pressure slash temperature monitoring system. So obviously this is going to be driven at 155 miles per hour for very long periods of time. You need some kind of system that is monitoring the tire and uh, pressure inside uh, the, the pressure, uh, the pressure and temperature inside the tire. Otherwise, if you have a problem, you won't realize until it's too too late, and then you'll have a blowout. So you need some kind of integrated system. Um, so just just thought as an example, have a look at this system by uh, Hankook uh, Tires. So as you can see in the middle of the screen, uh, to begin with, the tire is perfectly flat to the road surface. As you get up to about 50 miles per hour, um, the actual tire 
uh, goes uh, sort of concave in the middle, which leads to uh, very high levels of fuel efficiency. As you can see, um, you can see this cross section of this tire here, there's a lot of room inside of that tire uh, for various things, for, for tire pressure monitoring systems, for increasing this, the thickness of the tire, therefore giving it a, a greater uh, lifespan. There's a lot of things you can do with this, uh, with a tire to make it last longer, to give a give it better uh, rolling resistance uh, and to improve its performance. So it's definitely something that should be looked at by Tesla and the Boeing company in terms of vertical integration, excuse me. <coughs> oh, sorry guys. Pod interior. What do we need? So we want a minimal design, LED uh, lighting. So what I think is important, because we've got a glass pod, when we're in a tunnel that is going to be quite dark, is we actually want to light the way. So if we can see outwards, both from the rear, from the front, looking upwards, you can see sort of where you're going. Um, that sort of adds to the experience, really. Um, if you're the sort of person that feels quite claustrophobic, uh, being in kind of a, like a glass pod where you can see where you're going and where you've come from would definitely help. Um, needs to be air conditioned, obviously. Um, durable materials. Um, obviously, we don't know the sort of people that could be using this system. If, if it's easily damaged over time, uh, wear and tear, then it, it would cost more to keep the system running. So you want durable materials in terms of seats and fabrics, um, certainly the, the floor material. Uh, it needs to be wheelchair friendly. Um, something that really sort of winds me up here in the UK is we have these trains and the, there's a step in between the platform and the trains and it's an absolute nightmare for wheelchair users. So we need to make sure on this system that it is literally a level threshold it literally the difference between the two levels needs to be less than one millimeter in my opinion uh yeah and also uh, just thinking in terms of <laughs> it's a bit of a like a, a fun sort of feature and um, your friends could could go in the pod together and you could maybe play music via spotify so you could turn it into like a bit of a like a mobile disco area um, this system will be autonomous it's not going to be like this. It's not going to be mapping all the cars and people because there are none down there. Um, it'll be fairly simplistic as pods follow a set route. There's no traffic lights, pedestrians or oncoming vehicles. Um, IoT sensors along the tunnel will communicate to all pods and skate locations every sort of three, four seconds. So every pod on the system will know where every other pod is. That will mean that the probability of an accident will be next to zero. Hopefully there'll, there'll be a nice gap in between pods. So if it detects that a pod is slowing down in front of it, there's say a hundred meter gap and then it suddenly reduces to uh, sort of 90 meters, it can very quickly apply the brakes and uh, communicate to other pods behind it. Um, and that'll improve safety uh, considerably. Um, the third rail and the painted road markings will act as a track to follow and interpret. Pretty simple. You paint the roadway and you have the third rail so it can uh, use the system to, to identify where it is on the road to make sure it's ex exactly in the centre. Fairly simple. So, final thoughts. Each pod skate could cost as much as seventy to ninety-five thousand dollars to manufacture, but it will be something fairly amazing because it will get you from point A to point B super quick. It'll be a beautiful interior. It'll be super smooth and fast. It'll be a comfortable drive, and it will be fairly cost-effective to get you there. It won't cost more than a few dollars, so it'll be you know really brilliant to use uh, people will love using this system once they once they scale it up it'll be beautiful to use people will absolutely love it big money earner for elon musk this riding the system will be light years ahead of anything ever built imagine bart in 1972 people came from all over the world to ride bart in 1972 because it was just something very new and uh, unique and it was quite funky the way they sort of designed it and engineered it and hopefully that will happen you know with this kind of system um guys thank you for watching uh, episode four 
and you know please like and subscribe um any sort of feedback you can give me for doing these videos you know I'm trying my best hopefully i can keep on improving i hope you're enjoying the content so far um i'm gonna I, i'm thinking now actually doing sort of like a, looking at the hyperloop version of the boring company um however that's that's years away but i'd like to look at the micro stations as well maybe next week um so just just to sort of finish off this is a system by Revo, and this is why at the beginning of this video I was looking at cargo. Because Arevo's kind of looked at how they can move people around um, in terms of the system itself. And they, they've kind of invented four four pods. One, this is a bit like the Boeing Company in terms of like a bit of a, it's not, a, not really a copy, but it's a different way of looking at um, engineering a transport system so they've got um, a cargo as part of that so his thoughts for this week this is a system potentially that we could look at and um, sort of copying so thank you again guys <coughs> excuse me thank you for watching really appreciate it guys um, remember don't be boring and I shall see you